Today on Made to Hack, I stack coins dime wide and nickel high. So if you want to weld something, sometimes you might need something along the lines of, uh, you know, a welding machine. And what I have here is a transformer welder. Except for the better part of a year, I've been trying to get this thing to work. Uh, I've tried to get it to strike a, an arc. Try to get it to strike a conversation. Heck, just try to get it to strike anything. And it just doesn't really want to do that. 90 to 95 percent of the time i'm trying to get it to strike an arc the other five ten percent of the time i might get it to weld only for it to to uh, go over current trip a breaker or just you know overheat after a few minutes now there's nothing inherently wrong about transformer welders they've been around for a long time and for stick welding they're perfectly adequate except for this one this is the absolute bottom of the barrel chinesium heck chinesium looks at this thing and goes that's pretty shitty so this I couldn't get it to run anything remotely approaching reliable. So I went and got myself one of these. An inverter expert or a WSME 200 from N10. It doesn't really matter. It's, I guess it's one of those uh, premium Chineseium products. Uh, you know, not bottom of the rung but something better. So, I'm gonna open it up and see what it's all about. It's well packaged. Okay, so this is a kind of a complete uh, TIG kit as well as stick. I think that's um, MMA maybe. So it's got, you no, know, it's got a TIG torch with, with uh, TIG related stuff. It's got uh, a ground clamp. It's got the stick holder, some kind of handle, instructions manual, brush. And I guess the unit itself, which came in at about a hefty 50 pounds, 23 kilograms and change. Really well packaged. Okay, so it also came in with a face shield. I guess that's what the handle's for. Face shield, I don't know. Anyway, that's the face shield. So that's the unit. It is essentially a single phase 220, 240 volt AC, 200 amp. Uh, rated um, that's why it's called a 200 I believe it has a 60% duty cycle at 200 amps or a hundred percent duty cycle at 155 amps 26 volts for 60% uh, load and 26 also volts volts for 155 amp continuous 100% load quick look at the features of the welder it's got arc starting current peak current valley current arc quench current it could do frequency from half a second to two seconds 10% to 90% duty cycle one second to 10 seconds gas delay and 20 to 80 percent service clearance could do pulse tig direct tig it could of course do tig and mma which is like stick welding uh, ac or dc two touch and four touch for tig and the pedal control on or off now at the moment i don't know what any of these uh, features really do and the reason i picked up this model this i guess semi pro or maybe even pro model as opposed to something more simple like 150 euro uh, inverter what would have been reasonable is because this came in on sale for 300 euros in fact i paid 310 euros shipped to my house in fact i had a buddy of mine pick up this same unit about three four years ago and he paid close to 700 euros at the time so 
obviously I don't need all these features at the moment since I'm only going to be running it in MMA, but the price was so good I, I just wanted to pick it up right now and uh, considering it also comes in with the kit with the the TIG nozzle, the stick and everything that it was just too much of a good deal to pass up so that's why I picked it up uh, at the sale price. So looking at the back of the unit it's got our AC uh, input, two giant fans, it's got the grounding uh, post and the, the gas inlet. You just put in the gas I bought oxygen tubing because my store, the local store only had oxygen tubing. I think they were out of acetylene tubing. They had propane and LPG tubing. I don't know what kind of tubing is needed for argon CO2, but I'm pretty sure oxygen tubing works fine since it's an inert gas. So if you know, leave a comment down below. On the sides, it's got some ventilation fans. The brand is intensive, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, I've seen it also called ProWeld in green or some other units in blue. I'm pretty sure they're the exact same factory model from the exact same place. It does the exact same thing. Again, Chinesium, custom branding, whatever flavor of the month, color of the month, I'm sure it's the exact same model. Uh, all over the place. Okay, now I'm gonna have a look at the accessories that I came with. So, as mentioned before, this is the, the stick holder, the electrode holder. This is the grounding clamp, as standard. Um, it's got a brush. Comes with the uh, do-it-yourself face shield. We'll get into that in a second. Instructions manual, and this would be the TIG torch and kit, so. Ooh. Genuine parts. Uh, I guess this is a genuine brand. All right then. And so we have one piece genuine TIG torch, two extra, I guess, what are these called? Tips, maybe? Um, yeah. This is not exactly this old Tony or uh, welding tips and tricks, so don't expect to, for me to know what I'm talking about. So I've got, okay, so it comes with a number four tip installed. There's also a number five and a number So it was at this point that the audio, for some reason, decided to stop working. And since it's been a while since I've recorded this video, I can't remember what I was talking about. It seems that I'm explaining something in regards to these copper tips and just a tip. Or maybe I was throwing around some of that sweet, sweet welding lingo, such as stacking dimes, or maybe 6061, or thoriated tungsten electrodes. Mm. Thoriated tungsten electrodes. Yummy. And now some face shield origami. Grab the face shield. Throw in the handle, throw in the darkened filter, fold one edge of the face shield, fold the other edge of the face shield, fold the top of the face shield, and the corners of the top of the face shield. Snap in each side of the corners to the sides of the face shield. Now you've got your own very own origami face shield or in this case a camera shield since I'm going to be using something more akin to an actual welding helmet. I also picked up this uh, Cheapo Argon CO2 regulator um, which uh, can do all the way up to um, like 0 to 10 bar which is somewhere around 50-60 cubic foot per hour 30 or so liters a minute. It's perfectly adequate but what I didn't realize was the output had the small 1 8 inch uh, hose barb made for 6 or 7 millimeter hose. Mine is an 8 millimeter hose which is too small. So the first thing I have to do is to uh, put a um, 1 8 to quarter inch adapter and then get a quarter inch 8 millimeter hose barb on the end. So I'm going to do that. and. Um, They'll probably also throw in some uh, Teflon tape around.
with the eight millimeter hose barb, I can throw in a uh, hose clamp and just insert the eight millimeter hose and uh, you know clamp it down. Okay, I'm gonna turn on the machine. Fans start going. I've put 68 amps in uh, in stick. Uh, first things first, I'm going to go with a 2 millimeter electrode. They recommend anywhere from 50 to 70 amps, so I'll try that first. So I've got my ground clamp pressed into this bit here, just so that it stops some of the splatter. It uses 25 square millimeter uh, copper cable. We'll put in the electrode, in the holder. And we'll uh, try to strike an arc. Okay, first thing that I'm noticing, it instantly struck an arc and it's significantly less noisy than the transformer, even with uh, the both fans working. It doesn't have that transformer hum. This is amazing. Granted, I can't actually weld, of course, but yeah, that's a different story. And I welded on the wrong piece. I was supposed to weld that anyway. Well, what can I say? It, it's effortless uh, arc. Uh, arc striking granted as I said my welding skills are nil. I ran these beads uh, at uh, with a 3.2 millimeter electrode at 123 amps. Uh, it doesn't look like I'll be stacking coins anytime soon however I just wanted to show the penetration how deep the I mean it goes in this is still quite hot so um, the 3.2 millimeter it's a little bit more it's a little bit tougher to strike the arc but once it gets going it it works uh, yeah it just it works quite well on the package it recommends 110 to 135 amps so I put it at 123 for these ones but uh, yeah they still go uh, they still work quite well and obviously I have a lot more practice to do but so far that's the thing once you have a, a machine that you can weld um, but when you're not spending your time starting an arc, then you could just get a lot of practice running beads. That's essentially the whole point of it at the end of the day to get better at it. So, um, yeah, this is, uh, I guess this is it at the moment for, uh, for the stick welding. Hey, thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Also, make sure to turn on notifications to receive updates whenever I post a new video. If you like what you saw, hit that like button as well.